Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to data log for misfires and we are going to talk about the different types of misfires you can get. So if you're strictly only here for the tutorial on how to do it on VCDS, I'll drop a time frame for you on the screen. We will meet you guys there. But if you want to find out more about what kind of misfires there is, just stick here with me for a few minutes. I always end up doing a bunch of research regarding one thing to find out more about it and I was really interested in misfires. Sometimes with misfire under a hot acceleration, you can't even feel it at all but it's happening. So to detect it is actually very difficult. If you don't have some kind of data logging tool to tell you that your car is actually misfiring, you might end up driving your car without even noticing it. So there is about a million ways that your car can have a misfire. All right, it can be bad fuel, it can be a hole in your boost pipe, it can be a bad spark plug, bad coil pack, bad wiring. But I have technically categorized it in three things. The first one is damage related. It can be any sort of damage. It can be an, an injector damage, it can be a coil pack damage, a wiring harness. Uh, the ECU, maybe a bad fuel pump, there is so many things that can involve to a misfire. The second reason will be wear and tear. When I'm talking about wear and tear, I'm referring to your spark plugs. Spark plugs usually have got like a certain amount of miles or kilometers they can go. Usually afterwards, they start giving problems, which can obviously be misfires as well. And even usually you can buy a brand new spark plug that can give you misfires as well. So let's move over to the most important one, number three. The reason why this one is so important to me is because it's something that I knew about but I did not have a lot of information about it so I didn't understand the concept properly until I did more research. So you right here with me I have got an old spark plug uh, and I want to talk about the spark plug gap so if I bring it a bit closer right over there you guys can see uh, the gap properly so this the top part and the bottom part over there that is known as your spark plug gap. You can actually get yourself one of these measurements to actually just slide in to see what the gap size is. The reason why the gap size is so important is because if you increase your boost, you can get more misfires. All right, so let's go a bit more technical into it and let me give you more information about what I'm saying. So you're going from stock to stage three as an example. You're increasing the boost of your car from 1 bar to 2 bar or known as 15 PSI to 30 PSI. I think that's about the right measurement. So anyway, you're not changing anything in your engine. Your piston remains the same, your cavity space, all of those things remain the same. But you're putting in double the mass or double the volume of air inside the piston. So what happens now is that even though there's a million trillion more molecules inside, this gap in between the spark plug might not be sufficient anymore because there's so much compression, compression inside your piston area now that the spark might actually not even travel to the top part. That is true, believe it or not. So whenever you are flooring your car, putting your foot down on acceleration as hard as possible, when your boost kicks in at the max and you're having misfires at the max boost, that is going to indicate to you that your spark plug gap is too big, it's too large. You're going to actually go and close it up a bit. So there is a vital information. So if you're struggling with misfires under high boost, there is your problem. It's your spark plug gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift here to the side. So I'm going to drop a bunch of information here and numbers here telling you from what kind of boost you're running on your setup, what the spark plug gap should be. So if your car is normal and stock and etc., uh, your car will actually have a specific spark plug gap by itself. So you guys can just go through your manual book and get it if it, I believe it's probably in there. There's a bunch of forums online where you can go and ask and it's probably been already asked. So anyway, what we're going to do now is we are going to jump over to our VCDS. I'm going to show you how to data log it, what to put up, what to look for, and we're going to go to the road and test this out. So I'm not going to be telling you guys that we have to do only a one pool run. Most fires can happen awkward like at the weirdest moments and etc. So we're going to be doing two runs. We're going to be doing a flat foot floor out run where we're just going to put the car into third gear. We're going to go from uh, about 2000 RPMs. We're going to push it until the red line or on, in my case, uh, I'm having a DSG. As soon as the car shifts, I'll just let go of the fuel. 
so yeah, then we can actually just go stop the log and we can just verify to see if my car is misfiring under a high boost. And then also we're just gonna go around town a little bit. I'm just gonna go freeway, just gonna climb up on the on the highway, freeway, travel to the one side, make a U-turn, come all the way back home. Maybe it's about 20 kilometers or whatsoever, because you're you can also get a misfire randomly at random situations, like maybe when you're just standing still, you want to go up hill or whatsoever. So it's a good way to see if your spark plug gap is okay under the high acceleration and also to see that your car in a long ter period of time that you won't get any misfire. So without any further ado, let's quickly get into the VCDS. Our VCDS is plugged in, our ignition is turned on. We're going to go over here to select control module. Uh, then we're going to go to engine because the misfires is happening at the engine location. And then now it's going to quickly connect to the ECU. Once it's connected, we are going to go to advanced measurement values. There we go. Advanced measurement values. And now we're going to get this entire setup. So we are going to need the engine speed for this test. We're also going to need, um, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say charge air. I'm just going to say the actual uh, the charge actual value because we don't need to know the, spe the specify we just need to see where in our actual boost the misfires is coming from so the setup I'm currently busy with now is going to be the setup for your pool it's not going to be the setup for you just driving around town a bit uh, after that we are going to go and search for misfires so right over here we have got a few to choose from so this is cylinder one two three four this is an inline four uh engine is the 2 liter TFSI so we can also say over here the number of so these are the previous uh, numbers so we don't really need that uh, in our data log in our graph it will show the spikes on which cylinder is giving us the misfire um, so yeah this is once again just for the pool we can also say our misfire some um, some counters so it's gonna say our total amount of um, misfires so also here with the boost pressure let me just tell you quickly a little bit more about it so here you guys can see is 985 hpa that is technically the atmospheric pressure so you guys will see this thing is gonna go up to like 2300 or 2200 or something like that uh, you've got to subtract a thousand from it which is the normal uh what do you call it um air pressure such as now I'm standing still the car's not even idling but we've got a thousand HPA so you guys will see about 1.4 bar 1.2 to 1.4 bar of boost so yeah do not get confused with those measurements so we're gonna say log all of this we're gonna choose our area which is gonna be our desktop there we go we're gonna rename it to miss fire pool okay so this is gonna be our pool that we're gonna be doing and then save Okay, so all we have to do now is press start. So you're going to be putting your laptop on the side of your car. Please do not keep it in front of you. Just avoid it. Go to a safe area where there's no traffic and stuff. You're going to go to third gear or fourth gear. It's recommended for you to do fourth gear, but because I'm doing it on the roads, I don't want to exceed that speed limit. So I'm just going to do a third gear pull. There is the end result. It's not quite the same, but it's very similar uh, because a fourth gear pull is going to give you so much more time to do your pull and more data it can collect than a third gear that's a bit shorter. But the end result should still be the same. So you're just going to put it next to you, you're going to press start, you're going to go into third gear, you're going to pull the entire third gear. As soon as your car shifts to fourth gear, if you have the automatic DSG like mine, or if you have the manual, you're just going to put it all the way till the red line. Please don't limit your car out, don't break it or anything. Just pull it till a safe amount of number. You can slow down, press stop, and there we go. So let's quickly do that. Um, and then also one thing before uh, before we continue, uh, if you're going to do your normal cruise, it's not necessary uh, necessary for you to have the, char the charge air uh, pressure because I want you for that entire cruise not to step down on the field. You're just going to do normal cruise like if it's a normal day, you're on your, on your uh, way to work. So you can actually deselect that one, otherwise it's just going to be another crazy graph going up and down and all over the show. Alright, so let's quickly place it next to us. And let's go to the open road. I am currently pulling into the road. I'm placing my car in manual. Third gear. RPMs is low. Click start. Foot to the floor. There she goes. All the way. There she shifted. Sorry, that is just my speed alarm. So we're slowing down. Comfortable speed. And stop. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm quickly gonna go home. Sorry, I see the screen is shaking a bit. I'm quickly gonna go home. I'm uh, just gonna save this file on one side and then I just wanna take the charge pressure off. I just wanna quickly go around uh, the freeway as I mentioned to you guys so I can get both the logs. So you're gonna do it in the same way. You're just gonna go and set everything up. Uh, just deselect the charge, uh, rename it, uh, and then yes, then in that way, uh, you will have your normal run and your high run. All right, so let me make a U-turn. We are back now. I quickly did my pool run that you guys saw, and I just did my freeway uh, going towards the one end. I actually stopped the video, well, stopped the data logging when I reached the other end of the freeway because I know you can only upload a certain amount of uh, data onto this website that we have to go onto. So I just didn't want it to be too much, and I had to actually go back. So you want to go onto your laptop or your computer, you want to go and go to your website, you're going to uh, go to datazap.me, me, I'll drop the link for you guys here on the screen as well. You're going to create a new account if you haven't created one yet, and if you did, you're going to go over here to upload your log, we're going to say the English version. And then right over here, we have got a block that we can actually drag it into. So because my screen is so full of logs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here. I'm going to do my first. No, are we going to do the freeway? Yeah, let's do the freeway one first. There we go. It's uploading. Wow, that thing was little. I could have locked the entire way there and back. Okay, we're just going to say freeway miss fire. I still got to come back here and fix everything. So I can put in like my fueling and all of these things. Uh, so I'm going to keep it as public, meaning that if you guys, I don't know how it works, but if you guys can search me, you can come view this for yourself. Uh, and then we're going to say save. So this is the moment of truth. This is where I always get kind of nervous to see what's going on. So you, you guys can see is how we were driving. Um, all the ups and downs, accelerating from the, from where was this? Because I never actually went home. I thought it was like a small bus stop on the side. So I actually just quickly stopped there and removed the charge. Uh, so here you guys can see was me going to the freeway. I went to the freeway. I gave a small pull. I actually... Uh, Went, I climbed off of the freeway and then I pushed it a little bit again and then I stopped and stopped the data logging. So what we're going to do is we're going to say our cylinder number one. That's great news. So this is cylinder number one. It's having a zero across. Like if it was one, you would have seen like a stripe of a spike in it or a drop either way. So cylinder number one is fine. Number two is fine. Please, did something go my way for once in my life. Number three is fine. Let's see, zero across. And number four is also fine. Great stuff. So for the entire normal cruising, we had no misfires. And I think I do have to tell you guys that I did do a service about 500 kilometers ago. Also, I've got good news. Right over here is my R8 coil. So there's going to be a video for that in the future. Uh, so which is actually nice to do like a test like this before the time to see if your coil packs are actually bad. If it's like really necessary for you to do actually change your R8 coils. But because I'm impatient and I really wanted them, I, I got myself some of them. So here is the, the Misfire's complete counter and that is zero across, guys. That is freaking great news. So we know our Misfire is... How we said here in South Africa, Shanana. It just means that it's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. So we're going to go back, upload the English one, and going to quickly just make it smaller over here. We're going to do our misfire pull. Upload, make it bigger. Uh, this is just misfire pull. Pull. I'll I'll come back and change all the things. Add a good detailing note of it. My feel, my the link. I'm gonna keep it at public as well. Okay, please. This is the moment where we are gonna find out if the gap is good or bad. Okay, so here you guys can see there's our engine RPMs. We started at about 2k, ended up at 5.8. This car has got its own mind because I don't have a DSG tune yet, a TCU tune yet. Uh, it just went ever at once and it shifted here at 5792. As you guys can see, it came down. I let my food off. Oh wow, we've got so many. What is all of this? I'm not even sure. Okay, anyway, here's our charge pressure, air pressure. So, as you guys can see, uh, we were requesting 2.3 max, so it's about 1.3 bar. Remember, we still got to take out the, the actual normal air pressure, so it's about 1.3 bar. Uh, as you guys can see, it kind of dropped 
crazy. Okay, it's still actually more than what it was supposed to be because usually I think it's over here at the end is requesting 1.8, no, 0 0.8 something bar. So we're at now 1.9 something. So yeah, my car is over boosting. If you guys do not, I uh, haven't seen that video yet. I gotta fix it, but then I lose power. So I'm kind of in between. So here we go. Uh, here we can actually just switch this off to get our line up. Okay, so this is oh. Oh gosh, we weren't supposed to do that yet. This is the, the misfire, the actual sum. So then there are one, two, three, and four. Boom, baby! We don't have any misfires. I'm actually truly happy about that. Uh, so now I do know that my quail packs is fine, my spark plugs is fine, all of those things are fine, uh, which means I can take the boost up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, so there we go. We did technically uh, our misfire test yet. I still have a bunch of tests to do. I actually want to do an air to fuel ratio test next. It's still bugging me uh, because my car is smoking, but it's smoking black. But re recently I haven't seen black smoke. Even my one friend when he was driving behind me told me my car is not smoking uh, as he, like he was trying to look for smoke. He didn't see smoke when I was flooring it. So, But it was a cold morning. So now I'm thinking that the air was a bit colder. So maybe it has to do with my air to fuel ratio and my car is over boosting. So anyway, there we go guys. We have done this video. I do hope it was as informative as it can get. If you guys did enjoy it, find it educational, informative, entertaining, whatever, please do drop a big like. If you have any comments, drop them in the comment section. I will get to them as soon as possible. And if you guys would love to support the channel, hit the logo at the bottom right corner to subscribe. If you want to see any of my similar videos, hit any icon on the screen. And I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.